Welcome back. In this segment, we're going to talk about short-term memory. First of all, what is it? Well, short-term memory is our ability to hang on to information essentially while we're working with it. So for example, when I start a sentence, do I remember the beginning of that sentence by the time I get to the end of the sentence? That's an example of short-term memory. Um, what you're thinking about right now, right? The ability to think about ideas, plan for the future, all of that requires short-term memory. Short-term memory is really at the center, the core of the memory systems, and it involves a lot of those conscious processes that students can use to improve their memory. So rehearsing information, working with it, that sort of thing. Uh, if you need to look up a telephone number long enough to make a call, that's an example of short-term memory, right? When you first see that phone number, sensory memory kicks in, but you, if you pay attention to the number so you can remember it long enough to actually, um, I was going to say dial the number, but no one dials anymore, uh, long enough to put the number into your cell phone, that requires working memory, right? You might be saying to yourself, 797-2279, uh, 797-2279. How much can you hold in sensory memory? Well, that work, uh, the classic work, was done by this gentleman, George Miller. Uh, and he was part of a group of people who worked for the telephone company, right? They, uh, Ma Bell um, or AT&T used to have a really big uh, research facility in New Jersey where Princeton is located. And they invited a lot of scientists to push the envelope on communication. Um, and, you know, one of the first questions is, okay, how long do you make? A telephone number. Now this is in the days before uh, there was such a thing as programmed phone numbers. Um, you had to actually remember your phone number. So um, you do that research and what do you find out if you're George Miller? You find out that our memory is, our short-term memory can hold about on average seven items. And lo and behold, if you exclude the area code, how long are phone numbers in the US? Seven digits. That's because of cognitive psychologists. Um, uh, Miller also argued that uh, there's something special about the number seven, at least in human cognition, we seem to like to parse the world that way. So there's seven days in the week, seven C's, seven primary colors, seven notes on a musical scale. Seven seems to be something relatively important. Okay, so we know that short-term memory capacity is not seven plus or minus two letters. It is seven plus or minus two chunks of meaningful information. So a chunk is a term that cognitive psychologists use to refer to a meaningful unit of information. So for example, on the display right now, I have a whole bunch of letters. If I asked you to remember all those letters briefly, that list you probably do pretty well in because the letters have meaning, right? KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? Uh, MTV, CBS, IBM, NCIS. So you can remember the entire list, that entire list, because the uh, letters form meaningful units. An even better chunking example is right below. There's an extremely long list of letter. I'm sure you'll remember all of the letters in this very long list of letters, which reads, by grouping items into units, we remember more. That's an example of chunking. Can you hold information in short-term memory? Well, there's a classic study, a moldy oldie, 1959, Peterson and Peterson, and we are going to replicate that study that shows that uh, forgetting from short-term memory is pretty fast. It's not the same speed or, or uh, brief duration that sensory memory has. Brief uh, sensory memory is very, very brief, but short-term memory is, as it's named, pretty short in duration. Okay, so what did Peterson and Peterson do? Peterson and Peterson would give people a list of letters to remember. So in this case, it's uh, X, J, F, right? That would be the nonsense letters that you're given. And then they would give you a number. And your job is to say that number out loud and to count backwards by threes 
for as long as the experimenter said to count backwards by threes. Now, why were they interested in your mathematical ability? No, they couldn't care less. What they were doing was by counting backwards by three, that, that takes some effort. It's attention demanding. So you can't rehearse the letters while you're counting backwards by three. So they want to see how long is short-term memory in the absence of rehearsal, okay? So we're going to try that. I'm going to show you some letters and then I'll put up a number. And so for example, here, if the number is, if the number I gave you was 481, then you would say out loud, if you can, 481, 478, 475, 472, 469, et cetera, et cetera, until I say, okay, report the letters. So you ready? I'm going to give you your first set of letters and then a number. Here we go. So 525, 522, 519, 516. Okay, what are the letters? Let's do one more, okay? Same thing, you ready? Letters and then a number. And I want you to remember the letters and then count backwards by threes from the number. And this is a replication of Peterson and Peterson. Here we go, ready? 701, 698, 695, 692, 689, 686, 683. Okay, what are the letters? This graph tells you what Peterson and Peterson found, and that is short-term memory uh, can hold information, at least these, these nonsense uh, letters, for 15, 18 seconds, and then it's gone. Half of the information that you're holding in short-term memory is gone after three brief seconds. So items in short-term memory disappear pretty quickly.